All right, so today on the show, we have Amelia Sewell, a.k.a. Milk, and you can say whatever you want to say about her. You can come to your own conclusions, but as far as I'm concerned, she's one of the strongest women I've ever met because to go through something as damaging as she did and still come out on top, that's applaudable, and I applaud her. And you have to give respect where respect is due. And Jesus said you must give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. So may I give Caesar what belongs to her. <laughs> Good day, Milk. Welcome Yay. to the Lord on the Heart Show. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> I'm glad you are too. All right, so I want to talk about your recent projects. Um, you were recently on Teacher's Pet. Tell me about that. Tell me how that came about. Uh, Teacher's Pet was one of my greatest projects. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoyed myself. Working on that project, I met a lot of girls from all walks of life, from all over the world. Um, we became fast friends. Um, no matter what came out on television, in the end, we're all friends. And um, just working on a project like that, that's groundbreaking. Um, I like to be the first to do a lot of things. So psh, kudos to Jay Will and Carlene Samuels and to Addy the Teacher. All right, we know that, we know that you would you wanted to venture into music i think you came up with that track mm -hmm. are you going to continue music is it something that you are going to pursue oh, seriously? definitely um i am an upcoming artist mm -hmm. um i haven't found the song yet that you know give me the big boss mm -hmm. i mean i wish i was the one who came up with yes or nice because <laughs> yes or nice just a boss the place people are naming their bars and all these kind of things after that but i soon find that song i'm not going to give it up um i haven't got i haven't had a lot of television work to talk the things them and to, to, to be me for, mm -hmm. for my fans and to the public. And being an artist um, gives me another vehicle, mm -hmm. separate and apart from television, to say what I want to say. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I'm not going to stop doing the artist thing. I have a lot of songs and uh, I'm not getting 100% backing yet as an artist because everybody just knows Milk as the TV girl. So it's hard to come out of the box mm -hmm. as a television girl and break into the artist thing. The producers, you know, they're kind of iffy. You know, the radio people are kind of iffy. But, you know, bless up to all of the producers who have given me a chance and to all the radio people who play my songs on the radio. Because I have heard you on the radio yeah, man. several times. Definitely. I, but I want, to, I want to go back a couple years back because... I want people to really get to know you. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I don't remember how, how many years ago. Four, exactly. Four, four years ago, something happened. Mm -hmm. You were at, call it that, you were at the top of your career. Everybody know me. I was just, I mean, like, you know, the star started out with just looking like a diamond. Mm -hmm. And then you were a the other, name. yeah, the arms were coming out and then the star was going up and then... You know, that tape came out. Uh, I was at work. I was at CVM. That's where you were the first time it went viral. Most definitely. And my hairdresser, Julie Kane, mm -hmm. from Sassy's, called me and said, Milk, where are you? And I said, I'm at work. She says, leave work now and go home. And when you're home, call me. I said, what is it, Julie? I cannot just leave the people that work and go home. She said, well, I am doing somebody's hair. And um, she has this thing of you on her phone. And I really want to know if it's you. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I'd have to come and look at it. Mm -hmm. And so I went and looked at it, and it was indeed me. But like between uh, the space of 15 minutes by the time I left 69 Constant Spring Road and got down to Park Plaza, mm -hmm. it reached New York. Like I got a call from New York. Wow. And that was like 15 minutes from my hairdresser calling me. So it, I, everything just went spiraling down from there. Mm -hmm. You know, I... I couldn't believe it. Like, I was more worried about my family uh -huh. than myself because, I mean, I wasn't doing anything wrong, you know? What did it mean for you? Because something like that happened and there are certain thoughts are going to run through your head. What did it mean? Because I, I know you probably think about your career, but you're a mother. And how did, what did that mean for you as a mother right then and there? What went through your head? Um, as I said, I, I thought of my family. Mm -hmm. First, I thought of my grandmother because, shoo, she's mm -hmm. the one who raised me. Yeah. And how am I going to explain whether or not I'm on the tape Killing somebody or not, something is there that now brings the public light on not only me, but my entire family. Yeah. Um, so I called my grandmother, I told her, she said, Jesus Christ, what's going on? And then I called my son. My son is old enough to understand, and mm -hmm. I just equipped him with the response to anything anyone could ever say to him about the tape. That's my mother. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, if you know my son, my son is cool. We grow together. I had him when I was young. So we grow together. So we, we, we communicate like brother and sister, like brethren. So mm -hmm. I'm like saying, dog, this is what happened. And he's like, dog, 
you know, and I'm like saying, no, what are we going to do? And he's like, we're just going to do it. Uh -huh. And um, he goes to Woolmers, mm -hmm. and believe you me, the people at Woolmers, no one said anything to him. Wow. No teacher asked him about it. And I mean, they just kept it contained, whether or not, you know, they talk about it at home or not. Yeah. But they, 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 they saved him from, you know, going to school every day and being jeered. That's very commendable. Yeah. That's very commendable. Did you think, when it happened, did you think, looking back on it, because you have had a year to process the information, yeah. right? Did you think that you would lose your job? Did you think it was unfair? Hey, let me tell you something, Lauren. I, I, when it happened, I was at CVM for like six years. Mm -hmm. And I really, really, really wished and hoped that they stood behind me and, and, and made something of it. I mean, like, if we were in America, and I was working for NCB or something, NCB would wait a little while, take me off of daytime television then, mm, give me a nighttime show to appeal to the adult audiences mm -hmm. and, and make money from it. And, you know, got milk, CVM does, mm -hmm. but they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't work with me. And, and, and I was very, very, very disappointed in how they reacted and how they treated the situation. I mean, they wanted me to stay out of the public eye when it happened. Like, I wasn't, mustn't go to the supermarket, I mustn't go to the library, I mustn't go in public places. But I didn't feel like I needed to hide away from the public because I didn't do anything wrong. I was on the tape with somebody that I was with for like five years. Mm -hmm. He could be considered my common law in Jamaica, mm -hmm. according to Jamaican law. If he and I had a dispute. I could take him to court and take half of his stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't with another person's boyfriend. I was with my personal, you know. So what happened to you could happen to anybody. Could, could happen to anybody. Stay. And the way how Jamaica looks at it is like very double standard. Like, yeah. I mean, four years later, it's still affecting me. Like, it affects my income and my earning. Mm -hmm. You know, it affects the way I, I take care of my son. I have to be finding and inventing all different kinds of things to like get by and make it. But you've, you've surfaced on top. I, I don't know personally what you're dealing with or, or what she's doing. I can tell you this. From what I'm seeing from an outsider, you, Milk, you're doing a very good job. Thanks. You're milking it. <laughs> and I can just, uh, for lack of a better word. Pun intended. <laughs> okay. How vital a role did your friends play? Were people supportive? Did they disappear? All right. My circle is very small. Mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of friends. <laughs> I did not have to worry about that. I lost a couple friends mm -hmm. in the whole process because they didn't know how to be with me in public and not feel away. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know the thing, birds of a feather flock together. So what I'm on the tape doing, maybe that's not their thing. So standing with me in public, it kind of made them feel, you know, and they were honest about it. And I said, well, if at this point in my life you feel away, knowing that I um, was doing something that that's not, that everybody does it, you know what I'm saying? If you feel away, then don't be my friend. I don't, don't need friends that feel you. away. It's not like you did have killed somebody or, what a big deal. Um, how did the public treat you, fans, after the incident? How was it for you? How was your public life? Okay, my fans have been with me from, the, from day one till now. Um, my fans are based of more rural people who don't have cable. Mm -hmm. So when I was on TV, you know, like Moko and mm -hmm. Albert Town, Trelawney, and, you know, all the country rural areas and all the grassroots people, Pernell Charles, Arcade, Big Up Sexy, you know. <laughs> um, wh who made it possible for me to go out in the public arena to my downtown grassroots rural fans is Tony Matterhorn. And I big up Tony Matterhorn every single time I tell this story because... He made it okay for me to come into the dance and nobody don't say anything to me because he got on the mic and he said, yo, big up Queen Milk. <laughs> she had a new millennium. I <laughs> love the girls who don't do it, but you see the girls that do it, I love them more or less. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, everywhere I went, every place I went, Matahan was there and he, he just made it okay. You know what I'm saying? This is when you know who have your back, you know. It's not when things are going good. It's when something bad happens. And to me, like I always say, if I go out in half a tree and I'm protesting against something, even if my friends don't believe in it, if you're my friend, you need to protest with me. And if you can't protest with me, you're not my friend. So exactly. better you go on. All right. Um, quote. <clears throat> Quick quote here. <laughs> All men fall, but great men get up. Yeah? Building milk again. Mm -hmm. Rising from that. You, you didn't run. You didn't hide. You show a, a brave face. 
I think I could be terribly wrong. I'm wrong about a lot of things. I feel like you have a lot to offer young girls. You have a lot to teach young girls out there. I do. Because you made a, something bad happen. Whether you make a mistake or not, and you get up, you dust yourself off, and you go again. Let me tell you. Um, I was very surprised that not even like, um, what's that place? The Women's Agency of Jamaica. They didn't even give me a call to say, you know, stand firm. Da, da, da. Um, we'll, we're going to stand behind you and help you to get another job or we're going to help CVM to decide that that was a wrong decision. Mm. And the only two people like out of the, the upper echelon that you would say that called me and said, Milk, keep up your head. Lisa Hannah called me first. I love that girl. You see why I love that woman? <laughs> I don't mean to cut you. Yeah. I told you why I love that girl. I, I'm a big, I'm such a groupie for Lisa Hannah. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> Um, okay. <laughs> uh, Carrie Ann Lee, who works at TVJ, I, I, before the incident, I never spoke to her before in my life. Mm -hmm. She was the second person to call me and say, hey, I'm behind you. Mm -hmm. Don't let anybody, da, da, da. And I got a lot of calls from young girls who say, you know, I have a tape too. And boy, afraid to go to school and what I must do. And, and a lot of big women called me too, you know, and said, you know, it's a regular thing that I take myself mm -hmm. you know and your situation has made me think boy should I take myself again and you know I, I really helped a lot of people gave a lot of people advice on how to deal with it because my most strongest woman that I know is Faye Ellington who go through what Faye Ellington went through and is still okay yeah you know what I'm saying so I drew from Faye Ellington's experience what happened to her a long time ago and you know like I, I just give what I go through and what I know um, keeps me together to advise to the young girls and to anybody who asks me, you know, how did I do it or what they must do or whatever. So for those wondering what happened to Faye Ellington, I think uh, a couple years ago, I'm not a, not a couple, couple. A, decades, no, a decades ago. <laughs> yeah, I always a couple. A long time ago, she got. I think she got raped. Yes, definitely. And I, th I don't know what happened after, but she's raised above it. She's she's spoken out about it, and she's still living and she's still mm -hmm. here. My next question is, men towards you now. Mm -hmm. Men, are they scared to come up to you? Um, I am dating? scared. <laughs> I am the scared one. Um, men, no. Uh, men are always approaching me. Men are always giving me the support. But I am scared because, like, if a guy tells me that he likes me, I don't know if this guy really likes me or he likes the person he sees on TV or the person he saw on the tape. Exactly. So I, like, stand away. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, like... People don't really see me with guys on the road and stuff. So now, like, the rumor is I like girls and, you know, but it's just that I have to be weary of who I let into my circle and who I let know my son and who I let know my personal life. So it's, it's really hard to have a relationship, mm -hmm. you know, and say, because the last one that I was in, the tape is not what made it end. Mm -hmm. It's just the whole man and woman thing and like I'm just wary of all of that stuff right now There's a lot of rumors about who was on the tape. Uh, a lot of people said, you know Some people said it was a how can it be a lot of rumors when everyone knows that I was with one person mm -hmm. for the entire time I'm not the kind of person who is a girl where is a Lego beast and who is all out there because I'm an, a, 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 a Jamaican celebrity. But they were this man, when they were this man, when they were this man. I have relationships and I stay with the person that I'm with, mm -hmm. you know. And I was with Liquid for five years, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And me and Liquid grow together and we started working at Zip together and it was Liquid. Mm -hmm. I mean, there could never be a rumor that it was this person or that person because I can count on one hand how many people I've been with in Jamaica. You know, I went to school abroad. Yeah. All right, look, before, before I done the show, I'm not running out of time. Milk got really dressed up today for my show. I said, Milk, I want you on my show. And she's like, listen, I have to do it up big for you, Lauren. <laughs> she go get her makeup done. She got dressed up. I know you guys probably like what she's wearing. So I guess I make her. T tell us about this look today. I'm going light now. Um, I, I'm just coming off of Teacher's Pet. Mm -hmm. And my stylist, who is Shalene Royal out mm -hmm. of Toronto, Canada, she dressed me very classy on Teacher's Pet. I mean, I was knocking them dead <laughs> on Teacher's Pet. So, I mean, I couldn't come here looking any less. So I went down to my friends at The Trends uh -huh. in the Bargain Mall in Clock Tower Plaza and I said, hey, I'm going on TV and I don't have yeah, anything to wear. wear. <laughs> and I want something classy and nice, you know, like a little cute dress. Mm -hmm. And this is what I got. Very simple. It's a tank dress. Mm -hmm. And my makeup was done by Rachel Chini and my hair, of course, Julie Kane from Sassy's. You hear that? She, she did it up big for my Yeah, because I can't come along <laughs> to my makeup. Oh, shiny. <laughs> you understand? Okay. All right, so but we want... 
I just want you to know that the Lauren no Lauren fans, and there are a lot of people behind you. Thanks. So don't ever feel like, oh God, nobody knows. So we are behind you. And you, you know from day one that I've been behind of you. Of course, and I I've been on your from side from, one. So, from your dream calendar girl days, girl. Good stuff. So you guys, you need to keep looking out for me because <laughs> she's, no matter what I want to do, she's still going you know, to. Milk gonna features into her. everything, yeah. You Porridge, tea, <laughs> cereal, you know, coffee. You're never going to get rid of milk. So just deal with her. Stop bringing up the tape. Stop asking her for full questions. She's here to stay. All right, everybody. So that was milk. This was another episode of the Lauren or Lauren show. I can't tell you guys how grateful I am that you tune in every week. Yes. <laughs> Keep tuning in. Thanks. <laughs>
Thanks, everyone.